back to my youtube channel if you're just seeing this face on your screen for the very first time you're highly welcome if you're returning regular a regular subscriber thank you guys for always coming back and watching my videos i have been off here for about two or three weeks i haven't posted any videos except shorts which i'm trying out now so if you haven't seen any of, seen any of my recent shorts you can go and check them out follow me on instagram tiktok pinterest yeah all social media platforms um so i have been off for a while and i was just trying to like take a breather and like reset you know for the next half of the year um yeah so i decided to come back august because yeah i know that a lot of people will be coming this month or in september and some people are coming in january so i just want to share with you guys a few things as much as i seen from the title of this video things that i wish i knew before coming to the uk just to help you prepare i know some people are at the stage of packing shopping waiting for their visa and stuff like that so i think this video is coming in a very good time help you prepare yourself better and yeah as usual i have written down a bunch of things that i will talk to you guys about this is not all in one video these are prepped for five videos right but this particular video is going to be about things i wish i knew before coming to study in the uk it's going to cover just a bit of things i think you should know about like it's not centered around one thing but at least if you have this general idea i believe to make your coming easier your settlement better and your transition you know perfect um without further ado please smash that like button subscribe to this channel because i know you would love it share with your family and friends and other people you know that are coming to the uk you can share on twitter share on your stories share on your whatsapp groups everywhere please share my videos guys thank you guys so much so far so without further ado i'm going to start the video for today i'm going to be sharing with you guys a few things that i think you should know or consider before coming to study in the uk things i wish i knew i'm going to share with you guys now that i've been here for about six or seven months i think it's fair it's fair it's fair that i let you know these things and you just prepare yourself mentally before coming guys you can support my channel by going through the menu on that video and by the time you slide to the right hand side you see a feature called thanks this basically supports my channel super thanks you can purchase one for one pound 79 um four pound 49 eight pound 99 or 44 pounds 99 and i'll be glad you did also you can also like hit the like button which helps you to push my video to more people these are the ways you can support me thank you guys so much for everything now the first thing i'm going to talk about is when you come into the uk right you always have to prepare yourself before stepping out um first thing i'll say is the weather can be very bipolar yeah the uk weather is sometimes it can be really bipolar so if, even if the weather forecast sometimes can say oh it's going to rain and you come out it's sunny or maybe just light showers it can also say it's going to be sunny and it's going to rain so but i think what i try to do these days is to always check like the app even if i know it's not 100 percent accurate i check it just to have in mind okay i can just take like a light top and just a jacket that i can just or something that i can hold cardigan i can just tie around my waist if i'm not wearing it or just hold with me just in case you know but it's always good to to read or check the weather app before you leave the house trust me it is important another thing is you should always plan to leave early like fine a lot of things are almost accurate for example the bus time can say 10 4 and it will arrive 10 4 sometimes you can say you know but there are times when i have been at the bus stop on time and the bus had just left so what i try to do is leave 10 minutes before the time that i stated for example if the bus when i check i so I, I go to either of this app like google maps what i use most especially i just type where i'm going to and to show you different buses and directions that you can use i tap on the particular bus i check the time it can tell me 10 4 right so i try to leave like 10 minutes before that take my time walking where i can see the bus stop because the bus stop is actually close to my house but if it's far you can leave 10 to 20 minutes take that walk and be there maybe 10 minutes or five minutes before the time because sometimes i've come down and the bus was just leaving and it wasn't exactly the time that I was supposed to leave right and there are times that it will be late so it is like you know it is two-sided 10 minutes before 10 minutes after yeah so yeah it could happen but it's always good to plan to leave early because trust me you will run if you when you come to the uk if you are not fit it will be very obvious because when you are running like when you are running to catch up with that bus or that train oh my god you'll be panting like <laughs> you'll be panting like so 
everybody has gone through like i spoke to my friend yesterday and she told me that um, the, like she was running to catch a bus she couldn't catch a break like it was funny i was laughing i told her that welcome to the uk because everybody has done that you will run to catch a train you will run to catch a bus it is normal just so just prepare yourself prepare yourself for that race then try and make friends right i know that for, so for example it's not, i'm even saying it is not that easy but one of the easiest ways when you're in school when you're in class or in the workplace Maybe not necessarily wit, I don't know, but like you just try and ask questions, talk to people. It's one of the easiest way of finding out what's what because closed mouths don't get fed, right? If you're trying to get information, you're trying to settle in quicker, it's easy for you to call, just chat with people. Fine, some people may not be receptive, but at the same time, too, you just have to put yourself out there. You know what you want. You need to network. Like sometimes I go, as I'm coming back from work or going to work, you meet fellow Nigerians on the train, you just chat, oh, where are you working? Oh, what agency? How is it like there? You know, you just need to put yourself out there. You need to chat, you need to talk to people. These are the ways that you can find information. These are the ways that you can network, connect, make friends, just have a community basically because you don't know when you need something or someone. So yeah, that's one thing I want to let you guys know. Then... I just want to share with you guys some British phrases that you have to be, you have to understand or learn now because they, when you come in, they may be like a language barrier. Do you get? So I just want to things that I have made mistakes with share with you guys so that you know it makes your own life easier. So when they say I'm going to the loo, right? That means to the toilet, to the restroom. At first, I was like, the loo, the loo. What are they talking about? You know, but yeah, the loo means toilet. Um, when they say boots, obviously, we know what boots are, which are, we know what boots are like, shoes, right? Um, trousers here are regular, like, pants trousers. Um, knickers are like boxers. Pants are like pints. <laughs> we know it's Nigerian word pants um you know american english american who says trouser who says pants i don't know but obviously knickers are like pants or boxers so have that in mind when you say you're wearing knickers yeah jumpers jumpers are like cardigans something like this let me show you guys obviously we know what cardigans are so this is when they say like um a jumper that's what they mean um also um ring when you say you want to call someone right if you say i'm going to what they say is i'm going to ring you or ring you later or he just rang me that is like call over here um hoover so we in nigeria i used to call him the vacuum cleaner or whatever but here it's called hoover so when you go to work or you're somewhere and someone says bring the hoover or can you hoover this place you know what they're talking about um copper when you say can you do you want a copper do you want a glass like a cup of tea right a cup of tea is what they mean by copper um tea that's the word tea that we know as a tea bag water milk sugar is here especially in west yorkshire i heard it's like a west yorkshire thing i don't know if it's total uk but when they say tea tea means dinner like something they eat around four five six that's what tea means so when you say have you had tea don't think it's a cup of tea it means food in the evening i know right so they have breakfast they have lunch they have tea and they have supper that's how it happens here. so when someone says tea it is not a cup of tea. It means have you had something to eat? And it's usually around the time of like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. So yeah, bear that in mind. So when we are like in the, in Nigeria or in Africa, we say we are hot. That means like you are feeling in the Nigeria, you are feeling heat. You are hot. Yeah, what they say is I am warm or it's too warm. They're trying to let you know that it is hot. That's what that's that's the tone, the the language here. It says like I, I, it just makes them sense like it's warm i'm still getting used to it i still say hot anyways but sometimes i say warm but i'm like why am i saying warm when i'm actually hot hot but here they just say it's getting warm or i feel warm and stuff like that um another word that you get used to is cheers so i think um actually when i come down from the bus i just tell the bus driver thank you but i see a lot of them saying cheers mate cheers mate cheers 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 and i'm like is that supposed to be thank you because the chairs we are used to is cleaning our glasses, isn't it? But um, yeah, that's that's that. Enough of that. If I have more, I'll put them in the comment section for you guys. Yes, yeah, something you should be prepared to do. Imagine you learn UK is to know how to fake smile. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing it right, but like you could be walking on the road and someone just 
smile at you like at first i was like does this person know me like but with time i've seen that it's just something they are used to you just have to and once the person like once your cross paths once your paths cross smile is gone so it's like just because your eye like when is that when is that eye contact you have to be that smile it's fake <laughs> so just be prepared for that so when you see that don't think oh you know your mind's not going well just that's just how it is then also there's a question they always ask you are you all right 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 be prepared for that because we hear a lot a lot of that so nearly when i came i would like calm down and be responding i said no i would like answering the question like oh but i think it's their way of saying hello if i'm to compare it to our own standard it's their way of saying hello so sometimes you say ah yeah fine thank you and you that kind of thing and just move on like it's not it's not room for like a long conversation they're just that's just how they say hello yeah um then when you're entering bu buses right when you get to a bus stop you flag sometimes you, you can know from the trafficator as we call it in nigeria the light will be blinking you know the bus is coming to it's going to stop at where that particular bus stop you are and it's not all bus stops that all buses stop so you have <laughs> was that the right it's not all bus stops that all buses stop at so you have to pay attention to that like in a range of like two two meters i don't know if two meters is long what but in a short walk that's less than one minute maybe two bus stops doesn't mean that if you, every bus is coming, they will not stop at those exact bus stops. They may stop at one and stop at the other. They may not even stop at both and stop at like so a bus stop that is very far and you will start running, racing for your life. So you have to pay attention, right? And you can also ask questions. That's the thing, ask questions. So I was trying to say, when you're coming down from the bus, right? When you're about to get to your bus stop. So example now, we have three bus stops, right? One is called Ikeja, one is called Ojota, one is called Ogudu. If you are stopping at Ogudu, once they pass the Keja, that's fine. They pass Ojota. And once they pass Ojota, press that bell. The bell is usually in the bus, like on the handle. So I'll find a video when I was in the bus or a picture and show you guys. The bus is, we know how BRT buses are. So there's those handles that are near the chairs. You see like bells, like a bell there. Make sure you press that bell. After they pass Ojota, press that bell low. Press that bell low before you get to Ogudu. Then that notifies the driver and the driver knows to stop at Ogudu. If you do not press that bell and you think, oh, maybe you are almost like, if you press it too close to the place, they'll end up zooming off to the next bus stop. Like, recently, I think yesterday or the day before, coming back from work, like, a lady was quarreling. The Nigerian lady, obviously, was quarreling more, but like, she pressed the bell. But I think what she, she pressed it too late. Because it's not Nigeria that wants to press, you say, oh, wow, wow, I'm coming down here, I'm a lighting head. They just press break. It doesn't work like that, though. So, you just have to learn these things, because... <laughs> Winter is coming. Those that are coming, prepare for winter. You don't want to be trekking endlessly. You don't want to just be stressed because the weather alone will bring its own drama. So, this would help you. Um, the encouraging in pronunciation. Not, I wouldn't say pronunciation, but like what they mean. So, for example, you know, when you have 2.50, right? That's £2.50. pence. So, they can say £2.50. It's not 250 euro. Two pounds fifty means two pounds fifty pence. Just so you know. So in case you hear that and you're like, is it two fifty? Is it like you know, that means two pound dot fifty pence is called two pound fifty. So these are just a few things that I think you should know. Then also please, like this is something that I cannot overemphasize. If you have time, maybe you're coming in January, right? Learn a skill. Like, I can't, how many times have I made my hair coming here? I've made my hair just like once. Like, I've done just once, which is ridiculous. Like, since January, right? Yeah, I think just once. I'm not even sure anymore. Just once. And then I've done like cornrows twice in the space of how many months? My normal lifestyle in Lagos, I will make my hair every two weeks from packing gel to Ghana weaving to braids to fixing my hair. Like, Back to back, back to back. But it's not that easy here because you can't really find a lot of people that make hair. Apart from that, those that can make hair. Woo! I saw a Ghana with a one lady in the bus yesterday, right? When I was coming back from work. And I just went to meet her because the hair was just so lovely. Just normal all back, but it was very neat. I walked up to her and I was like, oh, I like your hair. Please, we made it for you. And she's Nigerian. I was there chatting and I was like, okay, give me the number of the person. And she gave it to me. I, she, I was asking her what's the price. She was like, no, no, ask her by yourself. I don't want to tell you. And I was like, okay. So I chatted the girl, Nigerian. 
I chatted her and um, guess how much she told me for cornrows all back Ghana weaving. 80 pounds. And when I heard 80 pounds, I was like, okay, maybe attachments inclusive, home service or whatever. So I was like, does this include extensions? Will you be coming to meet me? You know, just to ask all these basic questions. Darling, darling, 80 pounds is for the hair alone. I will find my way around, like coming to meet her will be a different conversation or her coming to meet me. Extensions going to be a different conversation. Just for her to make this 80 pounds. And I thought to myself, like, why? Like, why? Like, it's... So, guys, learn a skill. Like, I wish I knew how to... I can make hair funny enough, like, but not the professional one. I can make hair. I help my, like, neighbor make her daughter's hair. So, I guess children's hair I can make, but not, like, those bang bang ones. But at least weaving and stuff. I can even, like, make normal weaving. Like, cornrows and those kind of things for people. But, like, finding somebody that can make my own hair is a big problem. Yeah, it is, it's a skill that you can earn your money here. So, even fixing nails... If you can learn how to fix nails, please do. Learn how to make lashes, like fix lashes, please do. Learn how to make hair, please do. Like hair is going to be, is a big, 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 big way you can make money, right? I wish that I could take it up as like a side thingy and do it because the prices that people are calling out here. I just had someone for braids and she told me 120 pounds. This is not inclusive of attachments. The Nigerian in me was already converting 120 pounds. Let's run that number. Like, how much is that? And your brain will be like, no way, right? It's like impossible. But yeah, people are charging money. So please, if you can learn a skill, learn a skill before coming here. These are things I wish I knew, right? I should have learned how maybe to fix nails. Oh, no, maybe to make sense I can make hair. I will have learned how to make it like more professionally. Maybe learn how, even how to fix with one and stuff like that. Because, darling, you can stay in a weekend if you make three or four people's hair. Darling. Why are we talking about shift? Picking shift, skakiri, picking shift up and down. You don't need that. You don't need that. If you can make it, you don't need it. So yeah, darlings, these are things I think you should know. If there are any questions you want to ask around this topic, around your Japa journey, please do not fail to drop them in the comment section. Or you can send me a message on my Instagram page, which my hand will appear somewhere here. Please guys, follow me on Pinterest. I'm trying to grow my Pinterest account. Follow me on Pinterest. Follow me on TikTok and on my Instagram if you are just starting your journey you do not know how to go about like you need a reliable agent you need like information right you can send me a message um i have people that i can refer to that are trusted and used by me and if you want to have like a personal so i just started like a pick my brain one-to-one -one session if you want to have this with me there's a calendly um a link a link tree link in the description box right you can click that and you will see a one-to-one -one session with Georgina, you can click that and follow the steps and we can have like a zoom call for like 40 minutes Where we talk about anything that you want to talk about like you let me know the topics are that they are around and i'm glad You know, i'll be glad to sit down and have that chat with you So thank you guys for watching today's video if you haven't subscribed and you're still watching Please do well to subscribe share my videos with your family and friends and i'll see you guys in the next one Thank you guys so so much for following me on this journey Bye